So I thought I'd talk about two symbols that go together, alpha and delta. Um, and both of these symbols are used for lots of different things, but when you see them together, at least as an astronomer, it usually means you're measuring the coordinates of something, measuring where something is on the sky. And of course that's rather important to astronomers because if you want to point your telescope at a particular object you need to know what direction to point it in. And so these are the coordinates we use for measuring the positions of things on the sky. You give me two numbers which sort of measure two angles to tell you where to look in the sky, what direction to point your telescope in. And it's just exactly the same as giving somebody, if you want to tell somebody where something is on the Earth, you give them a longitude and a latitude. So it's measuring position and that's kind of a position on a sphere. We're doing the same thing but it's a sphere we're looking out, out, out at on the inside of if you like. And in fact, they really, they're directly analogous to longitude and latitude in that the delta, the declination, is really just the latitude. It's the latitude at which the object you're looking at would appear directly overhead. So, for example, uh, the pole star, which is directly over the North Pole pretty much, if you were sitting at the North Pole, it would be directly above your head, is a declination of plus 90 degrees. So it's the same, it's also the latitude of plus 90 degrees. So declination and latitude directly relate to one another. The, the second coordinate, the equivalent of longitude, is a bit more complicated and the reason why it's a bit more complicated is of course the Earth rotates. So it was directly overhead in terms of longitude at one point, it's the same position east or west, you come back a little while later of course the Earth's turned and so it's no longer overhead. Um, so the east-west one, although we use the same idea of measuring an angle around the sky just as you measure an angle around the Earth, you need a zero point. So just as the zero, the zero point of longitude is set by the Greenwich Meridian, uh, so you need a zero point for the uh, right ascension scale. And so what we do is we say, okay, so you set that zero point to be where the sun is in the sky on the 21st of March, so on the, the, the March equinox. Um, and so that sort of sets, then sets the zero point, and at that point absolutely everything is specified. And the nice thing is, of course, that if you think about what the Earth going around the sun, the Earth is tilted on its axis. The equinox is the point where the Earth is neither pointed towards the sun nor away from the sun. It's kind of tilted 90 degrees to the sun. Um, and so every year that occurs at the same time. So that you come back to the same point, so the same stars are behind it. So you really set, set a coordinate system which is reproducible from year to year. But there is a complication. And the complication is that although the Earth kind of comes back to the same point every year, there's something else that goes on with the Earth's axis, which is that the Earth's axis actually processes around. The Earth behaves like a spinning top, and you know when a spinning top's starting to tire, it sort of wobbles around as it's rotating. The Earth does exactly the same thing. On a very long time scale, the interaction of the Earth with the gravitational pull of the Moon and the Sun makes its axis wobble around on a time scale of about 27,000 years. So over a time scale of 27,000 years, the north rotational pole of the Earth uh, wobbles around, goes around in a circle, describes a circle. And that means that, for example, the star that's directly above the pole changes because the pole points in different directions. So what's currently the pole star in 10,000 years' time isn't going to be the pole star anymore. So that's part of the problem. But the other part of the problem is that that means, because the Earth is sort of wobbling around, that means that the point on its orbit, where it reaches this magical point where the axis is neither pointing towards the Sun or away from the Sun, happens at a different point around the orbit at different parts of this 27,000 year cycle. And that means that the stars that are behind the Sun on the 21st of March actually change. So that the constellation that the Sun appears to be located in changes on that 27,000 year time scale. So, uh, and so for example, this point where the, the, uh, where the Sun is on the 21st of March, when the Earth is neither pointed towards it nor away from it, is called the first point of Aries. It's the point that sets the zero point of this, this sort of scale for right ascension. But actually it isn't in the constellation of Aries anymore. It's moved around to Pisces, to the next constellation over. So that where the Sun actually is in the sky, where the Sun appears to be in the sky on the 21st of March, changes over time, over this very long time scale, 27,000 years. But because these constellations were set up and this zero point was set up by Ptolemy several thousand years ago, we've already moved one constellation around. Over 27,000 years, things move very large distances on the sky. The whole coordinate system changes. But even from year to year, things change. And so if you don't process your coordinates right, you end up not pointing your telescope in the right direction. Remember, telescopes look at a tiny bit of the sky, so even a small error in where you're pointing your telescope means you'll miss the object you were looking at. So one of my colleagues, who should probably remain nameless, actually forgot to process the coordinates right on a Hubble Space Telescope observation and ended up not looking at the object he was interested in looking at at all, but at a completely random blank piece of sky. So yes, if you get this wrong, it really has a big impact on day-to-day -day astronomy. I am, from time to time, confused with an astrologer. I should say I am not an astrologer, um, and so any pronouncements I make on astrology should be taken in that, uh, in that context. However, you should bear in mind that astrologers don't process their coordinates. 
So for example, uh, my sun sign, my birth sign is Virgo, um, which in the sort of naive picture of astrology means that at the time I was born, the sun was in the constellation of Virgo. Now because of this procession effect, the sun wasn't actually in the constellation of Virgo when I was born, it was actually in the constellation of Leo. And so the constellations all kind of move or shunt their way around over time. Now, the astrologers claim this doesn't matter because the astrologers claim that really what they're measuring is the time of year that you're born at. And of course that's all taken care of because the 21st of March, this equinox, um, always happens in spring in the northern hemisphere, autumn in the southern hemisphere. Our calendar takes care of that. Um, it's just the way that the constellations appear on that particular date changes. And the, so the, the what are called tropical astrologers, people who actually um, uh, track the motion of the sun in this way, say that it doesn't matter and really you're just measuring when you're born according to the time of year. I have a couple of problems with that. Firstly, it means that really if you're just using the, the, the names of, of the constellations like Leo, for example, as just a marker of a particular time of year, it has nothing at all to do with the constellation. Now the reason why that particular birth sign is called Leo is because the constellation Leo looks a bit like a lion and so what you're saying is that association with a lion is completely is not relevant to astrology but then if you actually go and look in the newspaper and read your uh, your star stars for the month it'll tell you you know your your leonine characters means that you're very royal and regal and what have you whereas actually you know what what these proper astrologers say is that actually no it's nothing at all to do with that particular constellation we just happen to call that bit of the sky Leo but it's nothing to do with the constellation Leo in the sky and therefore any association with a lion surely is completely random. The other issue is that there are actually several schools of astrology. So if you follow the Vedic school of astrology, which is Indian astrology, um, they actually do process their coordinates. And so they actually measure the position of the sun and the planets relative to the constellations. And they actually follow this properly and actually allow for the fact that the Earth's ax axis is processing. And so they change the coordinates appropriately. Whereas the Western astrologers, the tropical astrologers, don't process their coordinates. And so they end up with completely different symbols for what your birth sign is, for example. Uh, and what this means is, is that at least half of astrologers are talking complete nonsense. Um, personally, I'd go for a rather higher percentage. It's, I mean, the, the, the funny thing is this came up in the news fairly recently. It's just one of those things. Somebody put a video on YouTube, in fact, um, where they raised this point about procession of, of coordinates and the fact that the constellations have all moved around and therefore your sign of the zodiac is wrong. And it's just one of those things that just went viral and lots of people picked it up and so it got picked up by the mainstream media and it became a big story again. And it sort of annoyed everyone because both the astronomers and the astrologers are well acquainted with this argument and it's been going on forever. And you know, there is no real argument to be had because there, you know, there's no science in astrology so there's not much point in a scientist confronting an astrologer um, because we think they're talking nonsense and they know they're not.